You too, what's going on? How's it going from Asava? Welcome back to the woods for another video. Today I'm going to be going over a tips and tricks videos for the brand new Call of Duty Warzone free to play battle royale released by Call of Duty. Now, if you're watching this video as it's just being released, you know that the game is just being released as well for you to play. I'm going over a quick, compact, and comprehensive video to give you guys a little bit of tips and tricks of what might help you when your first couple games of Warzone. Now make sure if you like this video, you drop a like down below, you subscribe for more Call of Duty Warzone content, and you also check out the stream twitch.tv forward slash Connor Woods. Now I'm not going to do too much more of an intro at all with this. This is going to be it. And we're just going to jump right into some clips, scenes, screenshots, and I'm going to give you guys all the details I can and all the advice I can give you for Warzone. All right. Now what you're going to see here is the flying in to the map. All right, so it's not going to be the same as black out where you could just pull your shoot and you could go horizontal for very long distances. Um, when you pull your shoot, you're not gliding very far horizontally. So the best method here is to do the cut and deploy tactic. So as you can see there, you could cut your parachute at any time, at which point you get a little horizontal speed boost. The best method for getting across far distance horizontally, it's going to be cutting your parachute and then right after you get that little speed boost, pulling your parachute again. Now remember, your parachute does not auto deploy. So if you cut that parachute and you don't pull it back, you're dying before you even get to play. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit about the health system here for you guys in Warzone. So you're gonna spawn in with 100 HP and two plates of armor. As you can see in the bottom left here of the screen, you have your white health bar there. And then what Drifter is doing here is he's putting plates of armor onto his body. This protects your whole body. It's indiscriminate of where it is placed. Um, no matter where you get hit, it is protecting you. Each plate of armor does 50 and you can have a maximum of three plates of armor on your body at any time. You can also then carry five plates of armor in your inventory. The health regen is just like multiplayer. All right, you'll be taking shots. As you're taking shots, your health will go down. And then as you avoid taking shots for a couple of seconds, your health will automatically start to regenerate. Now, this is a really, really cool thing that Call of Duty has done with Warzone. When you die, you are captured. You are a prisoner of Warzone. For your first death, you are thrown into what is called the Gulag. In the Gulag, it'll be like the 1v1 pit from Gunfight or from... It's similar to World War II in the sense where people can spectate. But it's going to be basically a 1v1 gunfight. Here it's in Gulag showers, but apparently it does change sometimes where you get thrown into. People will be spectating as you 1v1. You 1v1 to respawn. So it only happens for your first life, as you can see here. Drifter is going to win that 1v1 and he gets released. No more second chances, as it says. So he gets released back in. He can get to deploy a shoot, dive right back in to where his teammates are, where he died, go back after his loot or go loot somewhere else instead. A little bit safer away from the enemies. Now, Gulag is just one of two ways of being respawned in this game mode. Another way of being revived after being eliminated, fully, fully eliminated, is revive teammates in the buy stations which we'll see in a bit it costs around forty five hundred dollars of the in-game currency in which you can revive your teammates as many times as possible so it is costly but it might be worth it the other thing about gulag here is gulag does close as a certain point in the game not sure if it's player based or if it's zone based after watching a few videos i believe personally i think it's going to be a zone based thing basically which zone is closing in rather than how many players are left alive but uh, only time will tell and we'll find that out and confirm it tomorrow. Now something I'm loving about this game is just how simple it is to loot players. The looting system in this game is very, very nice. It's very simple and very straightforward. It reminds me a little bit about Fortnite with the whole um, after you finish an enemy, like you'll see here, their loot disperses, lifts above the ground, very easy to see. It's not cluttered at all and very easy to go through. I really, really like that. It's nice and simple. No crazy attachments you have to pick up to attach to your gun now having said that there are attachments on specific guns it's based on the rarity so there is no damage buff or anything like that based on rarity such as like fortnite as a gold scar might do better than a gray ar however the way it works is you got your commons your uncommons your rares your epics and your legendaries and with each upgrade in rarity is another attachment added to that weapon it's random you don't get to choose but nonetheless, it's going to definitely help you out in your gameplay. Now, speaking about weapons and looting, there is a very, very cool thing, which you'll see right here. It's called a loadout drop in game. So it happens once per game 
there's about 50 that spawn in that drops kind of like supply drops in Fortnite, but it all happens at once. When this happens, if you go to the loadout drop, it's going to be between another yourself and another enemy team. So it's kind of risky to go to, but it's high risk, high reward. If you get to one of these little drops, you get to pick a loadout that you pre-made before the match started, kind of like a, a pub game class that you would create. And with these loadouts, I think I have a few tips and a few meta strategies you could use to help you really win these games. Personally, I think a overkill and ghost is going to be huge, huge within the meta. Um, overkill running an AR shotgun combo, an AR sniper combo perhaps. With the AR, I would definitely suggest the hybrid thermal scope. That way with your smokes, you can run the thermal and then close range, you can also have that reflex option as well without the voice crack. From there, I would also run Ghost as you can buy kill streaks such as a UAV and Ghost will keep you off that kill streak for enemy players, giving you that element of surprise. Now, the little drops aren't just random for that one time. You can also spend your in-game currency of $6,000 at a buy station and buy a loadout drop marker. This is where you can throw the marker, a little drop drops down, and then you can pick your custom loadout as well. Very expensive. Again, it might be a risk reward kind of thing, but I think it's a bit more of a safer option if you can find the cash. Now, as I was mentioning, this is a buy station. So the buy station, it's a little crate on the ground that you can find. Once it is open once, it stays open. So you know if somebody's been there before or not. However, it is unlimited buying any of the items within the buy station. So you can keep buying over and over. Anybody else can come and buy as well. It's unlimited. Within there, you have different priced option the items i would definitely uh, recommend is a uav uh, a self-revive kit the loadout drop marker if you haven't already got your custom loadout i would start with that and then obviously a precision airstrike or cluster strike and the other thing i would definitely recommend is the gas mask now if we're going to come down to things that will really help you win a game obviously if you don't have a custom loadout the loadout drop marker is going to get you that custom class where we talked about thermals the hybrid scope uh, what guns you want to run and a smoke which is very very big especially any kind of BR the next thing I'll probably recommend is a gas mask now a gas mask you can find around the map but they're very very rare to find the gas mask what it's gonna do is it's gonna protect you from the storm for up to 10 seconds before it breaks now the reason this is important is because the storm hits hard and it hits fast so if you get caught in that storm popping that gas mask is gonna be a very very big game changer to try and help you get a little bit better positioning perhaps you can make play through the storms to rotate around players as well so i think that's going to be a great item to carry on you now obviously another great item will be the self revive kit if you ever go down you can self revive yourself kind of like the gold body armor i believe it is in apex legends where you could self revive it's basically has the same functionality as that now if we're talking about the streaks either the cluster strike or precision airstrike would be great um, i think the precision airstrike packs a bit more of a punch and is a little bit quicker than the cluster strike when a strike is called down and a kill streak is called down in an area it'll warn any players in that area and it kind of gives them a couple seconds to try and reposition themselves and get away from the airstrike obviously if this is called in in a very tight circle or a very enclosed area um, it's going to be very very effective this is going to bring me to the uav the uav i think is going to be a great item kind of like early slash mid game if you want to really know where your opponents are now it doesn't cover the whole map it covers an area around you but as you keep moving, it'll keep moving with you. I would definitely suggest near the start to mid game, having multiple players within your squad holding UAVs. You can only have one streak at a time per player. So if three of you have a UAV, if you can scrounge up the cash for that, get the UAV, find players, eliminate those players, or keep yourself safe and get your smart rotations out of the way for your zone. But I personally think having the UAV to be able to identify where players are and enemies are, It'll be a very great tool to either get high kill games and when it comes closer to end game as these circles close precision airstrike cluster strike they're going to be very 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 big and very spammy so i would definitely suggest mid early game uav to protect yourself as the zone closes if you can find another buy station i think your team having precision airstrikes will be very very strong to kind of spam them on the other teams and get yourselves the win I hope I got enough information in there for you guys. Maybe a little bit of strategy that you guys can use, tips and tricks. I will be releasing more tips and tricks that I learn as I play the game as well. So make sure, again, you guys subscribe down below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you like, comment. Let me know what you guys like. Let me know what I need to change up or what you guys want to see. I plan on doing some challenges to get some wins. Um, we will hopefully see those later on on this channel. I hope they are successful and we will discuss them later on as well. Don't want to give away any secrets just yet.
Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you drop a like, comment, subscribe, make sure you share the video. I really appreciate real life channel grow. Best thing you can do for a small creator like me, better than subscribing, donating, or sharing any kind of money or bits is to follow the channel or subscribe on YouTube and share it with anybody else who enjoys this form of entertainment. Thank you guys very much for chilling with me today in the woods. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys have a great day and we'll see you later. Au revoir.